Hey guys, welcome to Casey's Corner. Today's episode is about finding your inner Wonder Woman. Yeah, that's right, I said it, Wonder Woman. And why? Because honestly, as women, as moms, we're all wonderful and we all have amazing strengths and gifts and qualities that we have a pretty hard time finding, don't we? Well, my guest today is McKenna Brown and she is an amazing confidence crusader, I'll call her, <laughs> I'll call her. Uh, she's an amazing mom, she's a mom of four, three girls too, so you know, she wins on that one. And honestly, we just were, I think we're kind of kindred spirits. I had a great time chatting with her all about the journals that she's created and the retreats and the different things that she does, so check it out. Oh my goodness, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for asking me. You are adorable and it's an honor to be talking to you today. I mean, I just loved like your magnetic mamaness. <laughs> <laughs> Everything like you know, it's so funny because social media, and I say this all the time, can be used for good or and evil, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and sometimes you just find the right mamas that like totally oh. are your vibe and your your parenting style and everything. Feels yep. so I was like, oh yeah, this girl and I were we're totally the same, cut from the same cloth over here. I feel like we when I saw your page, I'm like. Shh. She and I are meant to be friends. Like, <laughs> totally. Yeah, totally. I was so yeah, there, there's just some distance between us, but that's okay. That's why we do this virtually. That's right. That's yeah. right. Well, let's go ahead. We're going to dive in. Um, you are a mom of four. I am. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Three girls and a boy. Um, but what I found super interesting was when I was looking on your website, you shared your story of postpartum and yeah. that moment <laughs> of just feeling like, you can't take any more. Everything is so overwhelming. And you compared it to a pot of water over boiling on the yeah, stove. Yeah. Tell us about that time in your life. So I didn't know in the time it was when I came out of, as I was progressing to get through using tools and therapy and finding out more about what was going on inside my brain. And that pot of boiling water was really postpartum rage. And what I was realizing is that like, it's a thing where moms who all, it's not even postpartum, like even as motherhood, I'm realizing that a huge sign of anxiety is anger. A lot of times when we have systems in line and things don't go according to plan, or we feel a little off, we get angry. And I was an angry mom. I mean, to the point where I never hit my kids, but I like would bang the door handles. I, I didn't, shouldn't do that more than once. I just one time um, had my bathroom door and the adjacent closet door just banging them together because I had so much built up anger. And what I realized is that I found out through my journey that I had obsessive compulsive disorder. And I used to always tease like, yeah, that's how I get shit done. Like I'm obsessive compulsive about give me, give like, there's not, there's good things to being OCD, but there's also, if it's affecting your mentality like if the systems aren't lining up then I would get anxiety and then I'd get anger and then the anger would spiral into shame and I'd go into depression so I really wasn't coming out the other side realizing that I've had mental health um struggles before even postpartum I think it just came to a head when all the hormone drops in this were coming on so that's what I think was really going on oh, it's so funny because I think that there's this constant overwhelming feeling that we as moms feel and I mean you're super vulnerable on your page I'm happy to be vulner vulnerable too I think for me as a mom and you kind of just said it too I'm realizing how hard it is to restrain myself to keep the anger in yeah. I thought I was a patient person and my little one just knows how to test my push patience those, push those buttons a hundred percent. And, you know, I, there comes times where I have to tell her, you know, I get to the angry yelling voice and she, she stops me and she says, mommy, why are you using your mean voice? And I tell her, I don't want to get to this point, Kennedy. I don't want to be here. But the fact that you didn't listen the first time, didn't listen the second time. And now I'm at the third time when I have to use the angry voice. It's not fair for me. I yeah. don't want to get here. So, and like, so once I hit that point, I realize, okay, I need to knock it down yeah. a little bit. And I just, I don't know in your experience, kind of what are those cues that you see 
of reaching that level? And then how do you kind of coax yourself back down? So a lot of the times before I had tools and resources, I would get really dysregulated. So I was, I didn't have the capability to look at a situation and say, I need to scale back. It was like an out of body experience. Um, and then when I came back in, I always say like my soul left my body and I was just like left soulless. Like it was, it was dark. And when I get dysregulated and then it was like, my soul came back and I'm like, then I reassess the situation, but the damage is done. So uh, the biggest thing that really helped me was journaling and articulating my thoughts and having this inspiration of why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling Mm -hmm. meeting with a therapist weekly to help me give me coping skills and to help me feel like there's, I am not a bad mom. I just need, I, we all have our own struggles. We all just need different tools and skill sets. Mm-hmm. Um, and then going to psychiatrists where it's like, listen, you don't have to suffer. Mm. You don't have to let yourself get to that angry place. And so I was really nervous because I was raised, do not take medication. It's a sign of weakness. And that means there's something wrong with you. Mm-hmm. And so my husband kept saying, we, we need to be open to all options at this point. And I remember this thought coming into my head saying, McKenna, in order for you to make an educated decision for yourself, you have to educate yourself on all your options and then assess the situation. If you don't look at every option and and sometimes that option isn't for people and that's totally okay. But there are situations where if it's affecting you and it's affecting your life and there it's worth looking at every option. So I looked at that option. I felt really at peace with saying, okay, through that journey of medication, it didn't change me. I was very grateful. I didn't have any reactions. I took a genetic test that told me what I was capable with, what I wasn't capable with um, certain medications, but I just tell women, it gives me a bigger threshold. So I'm still in, I say when I took medication, it wasn't that I, it was like a magical fix all, but I tell people it handed me a raft. And I was still in deep water, but I could take a deep breath. And instead of gasping for air to the next second, I could take a deep breath and go, okay, where am I want, where am I heading? Mm -hmm. And I can't go where I want to go if I can't assess the situation. So I took a deep breath and I go, okay, now I'm heading this way. And then you pick up tools along the way, like, oh, here's an oar, or here's a motor I can attach to my boat, or, you know, like whatever you want to say to whatever those skill sets are, we could go forever on this analogy I have. And it's been like this funny joke, but (laughs) anyways, I would say that all of it together, like interwoven together has been the best thing. So I tell people I go to therapy weekly. I go to a psychiatrist probably every quarter. Okay. And then I apply everything. And that's why I started my journal company was through that. Amazing. We're going to get to that in a second. I think though, that as women, there's something that we are either programmed at a young age at some point, or we take this upon ourselves because we love adding to the load, right? Of (laughs) bottling it up, Mm -hmm. not letting us look overwhelmed, not admitting to the overwhelm. And there's, um, you've seen the movie, Bad Moms. Yes. Yes. There's that, (laughs) that scene that Kristen Bell is like, she just wants to get hit by a car or something like that so that she can have that time in the hospital. And I had never felt more seen than than when I, because I was like, when I saw that movie, I was pretty early on into motherhood, but like, I would be lying if I said that there are not times that I'm like, broken ankle could be pretty good. Like an overnight in the hospital, of course, like I'll bite my tongue saying it now, but no, it's no, it's true. Like those thoughts, obviously those thoughts happen. But where you're just off. like, how am I going to get a break? I don't know how else I'm going to get a break than to like break, break. get hurt. Yeah. Literally make a break. Yeah. It's yeah. so true. And I, and I always do this sign and this is my Stepford wife, like, hold <laughs> up. like I'm fine. Everything's fine. And you know, and I say like, I, the moment I decided to be vulnerable and before I say that, like old ancient societies, when a woman had a baby, the women, like 
they all rallied around each other and it took a legit village Mm. and they gave this mom a break for months and months and months. And they all pitched in to help raise this child. Mm. But now we're given two days in the hospital and sent on our way to act like we know exactly what's going on. And then if you ask for help, you're weak and you have to act like everything is fine. But what I'm finding is this whole mental health movement that people are speaking up and they're saying, I'm not fine. I'm actually not okay. And I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not enjoying motherhood. I'm angry. I'm this, I'm, and everyone goes, Oh, me too. I start to see, be seen, right. We see these episodes in a movie and you're like, Oh, I see. I feel seen. I feel like that's why I connect with a lot of women is in society. I'm usually always done. I have lipstick on and I'm always ready. I remember like walking my baby in heels when she was uh, like, I had two babies back to back everyone. And I thought, why, you know, a, it kind of helped me get out of bed. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm like, why are we acting like we need to be so perfect? Everything's not fine. Like I was really struggling and I needed help and I was feeling lonely. And why can't we just be like, Hey, I feel lonely instead of saying, Oh, I'm fine. Look at me. I'm all done up. And why is it that we have to look that way to be like, why is it all of a sudden about physical appearance, mm-hmm. perfectionism yep, to yep. make it look like everything's fine. And I thought like, what if anyways, so that that was kind of my thought process. So that's kind of when I started sharing my story was all like, you know what? It's about time. I start telling neighbors and friends, Hey, I was at the behavior hospital. Everything's yeah. not fine. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's it. I think that like just having more content and creators out there just sharing this super vulnerable, real uh, side of parenting and of motherhood and of the way it weighs on our mental health and things like that is really what's going to help push it to be the normal and not be so like, oh, really? You have those thoughts? Like, oh, she must, she must need help. Like we all need help. (laughs) And it's not weakness to ask for help. I think it takes a lot of courage and strength to say, hey, I need help. So I always tell women, it's not weakness, it's strength to be vulnerable Mm -hmm. and surrender and say, I need help. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go ahead and talk about your journals. Tell me what is the Wonder Woman journal? Okay. So I always tell women, I'm like, you think of Wonder Woman, right? Mm -hmm. And she's this like untouchable superhero that we could never measure up to. And I tell women, what if, so people used to say things like, oh, McKenna, you look like Wonder Woman. I'm like, here's the thing. We all are Wonder Women, right? We all are doing wonderful things in our day that deserve to be celebrated. So we talk about how celebrating the good. So whenever I work with women, I go, okay, well, what are some good things that happened this week? And they'll all go like, oh, it was my son's birthday or it was this, or it was like someone graduated in these big events. I go, those are all good moments. But let me explain to you what good moments are. They're actually our wins of the day. You know, you might not have taken a shower, but you did the dishes or you did the dishes or or you didn't do the dishes, but you showered or, you know, and we go through these wins. My laundry isn't done or put away, but it's clean. Mm -hmm. You go through your things that you have been finished, right? Not that you have to have to do. Right. So I say, allow yourself time to celebrate those moments. And I say, even on my darkest day, I put my hand on my chest and take a deep breath and go, I'm breathing. I'm alive. And my life deserves to be celebrated. So no matter what you have a, a win, you're alive. Right. But I also say embracing the hard that my first journal entry was the day I drove myself to the behavior hospital. And I said, there was so much inspiration, empowerment, and insight when I wrote down how I was feeling that day, what led up to that moment. And I really felt like, oh, I'm surrendering to, you know, I believe in God. And I believe that God was saying, thank you for embracing this. This is where the lessons are. This is how you become better. Then I say to learn to laugh. Um, I say laughter can either lighten our load or be the straw that breaks the camel's back. And so think about a time when you're really struggling and you trip over your own foot and you're like, see, I'm an idiot. I can't even walk straight. And it's like, or it's like, oops, I tripped over nothing. And you laugh and you go, okay, I'm a human, not a robot. And you learn to laugh. I always talk about when I drove off with the gas pump in my car twice in six weeks, it was so embarrassing. (laughs) And I sat in the car and I'm like, think about when you do something ditzy. What is the first thing we do? We go, I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I did that. We automatically go to self-shame which is the lowest energy we could ever feel. And that's a dangerous habit. So I say, if we can shift those moments into laughter, that it will help lighten our load and actually realize we're doing better than we thought. All these things show us that we're stronger than we even knew. And those are, and we're wonder women. 
I love that. So why do you think it's so hard for women to recognize that those moments within ourselves? We put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Yeah. There's so much to do and the list is never done. And I think even men can relate to that, but women, especially like we're juggling a lot of, of, I always say we're, we're juggling with our hands. We're spinning plates on our toes and we're, you know, holding something on our hip, you know, like we're doing all the things. And if we stop, everything drops, the plates shatter, the balls go everywhere and whoever, whatever's on your hip drops. And I say, but those are the moments when we stop that we allow. I also believe Jesus is my Christ and my savior that he goes, thank you. I can help carry the load. You're not meant to carry it all of yourself. You're not meant to juggle and spin plates on your toes all at the same time. Like we're not, we're made to do that because in nature and like our innate abilities are to multitask. We have lots of things we're holding together. Um, but we're also allowed to say, I can't do it all on my own. And we're not supposed to. No, that's so true. I think that, again, we put so much pressure on ourselves. And I don't know about you, maybe this is a good kind of topic for both of us being content creators. Do you think that social media adds to that pressure? Do you think it makes others feel like, oh, I need to kind of keep up with the Joneses a little bit? Oh, absolutely. And I think that there's a balance. Um, And that's why I share everything because I want people to feel safe with my page, but yeah, there's a balance in society and I don't blame people for doing this, but, um, yeah. At what point do people feel like I can't air my dirty laundry to I'm trying to keep it real. And, and it's okay to want to post that you're having successes. I think when we feel bothered by someone else's post, cause we all feel it from time to time. I, yeah. I ask myself this question, why is that affecting me? Mm. I don't, think it's them per se that what do how can I look inside and I think if we're we're aware of your intentions of posting something because sometimes I'll say well I don't know I knew my intentions and that wasn't to hurt somebody and if someone feels hurt that they should ask themselves why they feel hurt Mm. and ask yourself what was my intention and if your intentions are pure and clean then you're fine and I think really if we all took time to look inside of why things are bothering us I think it would really take just a little shift of social social media to be like, why am I insecure when someone posts that their house is really clean? Oh, because my house is messy, neither good or bad. It's just how are we talking to ourselves? What are we, we become more self-aware. Right. So I don't know if that answers your question because I see a lot of times people might be upset about something I post and I'm like, well, my intentions were pure. And my intention was to help. So I, I want people to post um, something that they feel vulnerable about or not. That's something they want to post. We shouldn't have to like overly be my life sucks. My life sucks. My life sucks. But also be like, Hey, when I post about my husband, I'm like, listen, we go to therapy weekly. I love my husband. We've had our fair share of struggles, but there's no one more perfect for me. You know? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that answers your question. It's a no, trick, I think it's so. And I think the be- realm to like balance. Yeah. Cause I think that there's, you know, I, I've been gotten, I've gotten feedback of, you know, oh, you're just, you're always so happy. You're always this, you're always that. And I'm like, no, I'm not. So I realized I need to just, when I'm having the like frustrating moments, those are moments that I could and should share too, you well, know? Yeah. So I think that I that's that all been, the time. McKenna, you're so happy. I'm like, is this yeah. a problem? Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly <laughs> that too. I'm like, well, there, why does my happiness bother you? Like, yes, that don't ever dim your light because someone else feels like, mm. Don't dim your light because someone else feels uncomfortable. Like that's why I always ask people like, don't overthink come from a place of your truth and however people receive it, that's their, that's their thing, but you don't want to be just like, I don't know. I've dealt, we, I can feel you. Like I, I know we're just meeting, but we've endured a lot of judgment in our life before we're we're fake. If we're not nice enough, we're stuck up. And, and it's a tricky place to that. All I say is, however, I feel the moment that feels true to me, then this is my safe space. And if you don't like it, you don't have to follow me. Totally. I'm not desperate. Yes. I, I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> I've, I've definitely had those instances. And uh, a quote that like, I always kind of replay in my head is stop shrinking yourself to fit into places you've outgrown. 
and I'm boom. Like, I love it. That's right? so good. Yeah, it's so true. I feel mm-hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's time. Um, well, listen. There's other journals that are in your Wonder Woman set. So, kind of tell me. I think there's three of them right now, right? Three yeah, different. Three. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about the differences. So I, after I created just the blank journal, it has an introduction mm-hmm. and talks about what the Wonder Woman moments are briefly okay. that I had seen before. And they're just blank pages. Um, the second one, people would say, oh, the blank pages intimidate me. Where do I begin? I'm like, mm-hmm. start with gratitude. So I thought, you know what? I should make a gratitude journal. So I created a gratitude journal, but the last fourth of the page says my Wonder Woman moment of the day. Okay. So you still celebrate yourself. It still like rings in circles, the Wonder Woman theme. And then the third one is a prompted journal. And I'm rebranding that one right now, but it's a powerful journal. It's actually turned into seven steps to create and nurture self-love and confidence in your life. Nice. Those steps I have found have been what have helped me create my self-love and confidence. Mm. So I have a whole course that's literally going to be launched in about, ooh, three, four weeks about creating self-love and confidence. And that's what I do. I also have a Wonder Girl Academy. That's the prompted journal for women, but for girls. And it comes with a workbook. I teach girls how to make their own personal affirmations for themselves. And I teach them how to incorporate the seven steps in their life to create, nurture, self-love and confidence. So those are the things that I'm narrowing. I love that. You shared um, a video, I think it was a couple of weeks ago of you and your daughter. She had like a bad day at school and you brought her, oh my gosh, it made me cry. Um, It was just so beautiful to see Tell us a little bit about that moment. I'll let you kind of ex- yeah. set it up, set up the story. So um, I didn't c- create this process, but that's called an I am statement. My friend went to this intense retreat and they did this. And then we do them at our retreats. I also host retreats and I do it mostly with women. Um, but she called me crying from school that she didn't feel st- that she was stupid. She didn't math is so hard. So I took her home. I went and checked her out. We went and got lunch together and I brought her home and I said, let's list everything you're good at. What are your good qualities, Quinn? You know, tell me about what you're good at. What are some things about Quinn that you love? And we just, I couldn't keep up. I was like, oh my goodness, stop. And then I went to the other side and I said, I don't want you to, I don't want to talk about the things you're bad at. We're going to talk about the things you have to work harder at. Mm -hmm. I go, if everyone, I go, is there anyone who's perfect and who's good at everything? She's my artsy child child she's she loves the piano she plays the ukulele she's very musically in tune she can do like eight back handsprings in a row she's this star cheerleader she is like she plays volleyball she's all these amazing qualities but she struggles in one thing and I think it, we as women can relate like oh we're falling short in this area motherhood doesn't come naturally to me I'm not a good cook therefore overall I suck yeah so I thought I related to her in that moment with math and I thought let's walk through this. You have to work harder at math. Are there people in your class that are really good at math? And she goes, yeah. And I go, can they do eight back handsprings in a row? Well, no. And I go, can they play the piano? Well, no. Can they play the ukulele? Well, no. I go, honey, we all have different gifts and strengths. And we're going to celebrate that person who's so good at math. And we're going to be so happy for them. And then we're also going to remember, hey, this is a section of my life I have to work a little bit harder at, but that doesn't mean I'm stupid. I house and remember your gifts and strengths. So how are we going to remember your gifts and strengths in those moments of despair or defeat or we feel stupid? I said, we're going to create our own I am statement because the words that follow I am are magic. They're magic. We always say please and thank you are magic mm-hmm. words because they make people feel good and they're respectful. But what you say after I am, you will believe. I always say the universe says yes. We'll always say yes. In the way you speak to yourself, some people will joke like, oh yeah, well. I want a million dollars. Okay. Well, listen, okay. that's still holding me. You're talking about your own self view, how you view yourself. The universe will say, okay. So if you say I'm stupid, whether or not it's the truth or not, it says they say the universe says yes. Mm-hmm. So Quinn, what are we going to say and replace? What's the truth? I say you step out of Satan's lies and into God's light by remembering how he sees you. I want you to see yourself the way mom sees you. So I said, circle three to four things that you really feel encompass that whole entire list. So I believe she said, I am strong, confident, kind, um, artistic. I can't remember all the things she said, but she goes, and we say it three times. So I said, okay, the first time you're going to read it, the second time you're going to say it. And the third time you're going to claim it. And what that means is you're claiming this is your truth. So I say, Kate Quinn, who are you? 
And she's like, I'm strong, kind, artistic. And I'm like, no, Quinn, who are you? And she says it. And I'm like, Quinn. And I start banging the table. And I'm like, say it. Who are you? And 90% of the time when I do this with women um, and girls, they start to cry because when they claim it as their truth, it, it is powerful. And that's what I did with her. And I actually did, there's a youth group. I did this with last Tuesday and it was girls between the ages of 14 to 17. And it was so powerful watching these girls own their truth. Mm. A lot of them cried. I've gotten messages after women, girls who have really struggled and that's helped them out of situations. Anyways, I believe that when we claim our I am statement. And we say it when we're in, it's different than affirmations. I say it's a step further. Affirmations are things we shift throughout the day or not even, I mean, I shift mine weekly, okay. daily, but an app, I am statement is who you are. So my friend, I know I'm rambling, but I think it's important. She was, um, dirt bike riding her, okay. her and her husband go dirt biking. I'm like, ah, <laughs> but she goes, there's this huge hill and she goes, I can't do this on. I can't, she kicked, she turned her bike off. She goes, I can't do this. Say, I'll stay right here and I'll wait for you. And he was at the top of the hill and he said, he looked down at her and yelled, Leslie, who are you? <laughs> and she's like, oh gosh. Okay. I'm, and then she said her, I'm statement. And he goes, Leslie, who are you? And at the third time she said, she kickstarted her bike and revved up that mountain. And she said, I did it. It reminds us of our strength. It takes us out of self-doubt and Satan's lies and into God's light to who we truly are. And it's just those moments. I say, whip that out and it can shift throughout your life, but that is who you are. Oh, I love that. I need to work on that myself because I think we, yeah, yeah, we so often, um, especially as moms, like when someone says, you know, oh, who are you? My first thought would be wife, mom, like, you know, it's the labels too. Yeah. Labels. It's mm-hmm. the labels though. We, we don't actually take the time to look into ourselves to see who we are. We kind of label it as who we are to others, right? Yep. And oh. I tell girls that there's a difference between being confident and conceited. And mm-hmm. I try to help. There's a huge difference. When you're conceited, it's either me or you. It's I am going to be good and you can't be good. We can't do this same thing because there's not room for both of us. And I'm like, but confidence is when you realize who you are and your gifts and strengths, you start to see other people's gifts and strengths. And you realize, oh, it's me and you. There's room for all of us at the top. We can all have podcasts and uh, we can all do different things and own different journal companies and we can own different. And there's room for all of us to be be successful. It's an abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset. So I tell girls, there's nothing conceited about owning who you are. That's who you are. And as soon as they see who they are, they'll embrace who you are. So I say that everyone's a wonder woman. Everyone's a wonder girl. We all have different gifts and strengths and we're stronger together. Just like my daughter with math, you have to work harder at math, but maybe that person has to work harder at the piano or other talents that they have. You're a really good reader. You know, you don't have to work hard at reading, but you have to work harder at math, all the things. But if we all were, we all need each other to grow. Oh, I love that. I love that conceited versus confidence too. What a great, great lesson, Um, especially raising daughters. I mean, I have one, you have three, so you've got much more experience than I do, but um, just like, you know, the confidence versus um, being conceited, what are the lessons that we really, give me like one or two lessons that we really should be teaching our girls right now? So uh, with the confidence versus conceited, I want other like, okay, so if someone comes to your daughter and we've been dealing with this this week, so this is what's in the forefront of my mind. When somebody is rude, the first thing as moms, what we want to do is jump in, kick that kid's trash, tell the principal, tell the teacher, and we want to do all these things. There is a time to step in and I, we can talk about what those mean, but I believe that it's our job to teach our daughters compassion. And in order to teach them compassion, we look at them and say, why do you think that girl is being rude to you? And a lot of people are like, well, she's jealous. That's jealous. But what is really, why is she treating you this way? It's probably because of how she's being treated at home. And so we treat people the way we feel on the inside. So I also want you to come at her like, okay, what she's doing is not okay. 
But when you come from a place of compassion, it takes the person taking it personally out of the picture. So when she says your hair is ugly, or if she says your clothes are ugly, it takes the taking it personal out of it and goes, oh, she's just really struggling because I think so many times we take things literally like, right. oh, are my clothes ugly or what's wrong with my hair? And we realize there's nothing wrong with who I am. She's acting how she feels on the inside. I'm going to wish her love, like send her love, yeah. still stand up. We're still a tricky balance, but also remembering how it makes you feel. Because if we remember how it makes us feel, we're going to treat others with kindness. We'll remember if we ever feel left out, we see someone who looks like they're being left out. We're going to remember to include them. Right. We're going to remember to make sure they feel loved. And I think that helping girls be more aware of feelings helps people think, oh, I don't want her to be more aware. That makes her more sensitive to criticism. No, I think being more aware of our self-love and our confidence and how people treat us and how we can treat others creates that mindset that we're all doing our best. And so creating self-love and confidence in our girls is crucial. That's why I created the Academy for girls. Cause if we can teach girls to love themselves and be confident with themselves, it will change the whole outlook of girls will be girls. I hate that. I'm like, no, I will not accept mean behavior. I will not accept cattiness no. in our home because that just shows that you're not confident and you don't love yourself. So let's shift things. No, absolutely. I love that too. There's, there's such a, um, like a shift and a movement, I feel like now, especially, and I think it's really happening with our generation, right? Where I think the generation before us, it was harder for women to be either in the workplace or there be multiple women, you know, uh, I was, I forget who I was listening to. Oh, I was listening to, uh, Jamie Kern Lima and she was talking about how before, you know, there would be one seat for a woman at an executive board or, you know, in an office or something like that. And rather than say like, oh, we can't invite any other women here. It was make another seat. Don't make it, don't fill the next seat with another man so that there's only one woman, fill right. it with another woman, you know? Um, so I think that just having that support rather than competition yeah. continuously, about, like around us and you know what you said earlier there's always going to be another podcast there's always going to be another journaling company there's always someone more but I don't see it and that's why I try to connect with other content creators too because I'm like why on earth would we not why would we avoid each other when really we could no. just, right I see a cute beautiful girl and I'm like I want to be her friend <laughs> I'm like and why do is it if she's cute and beautiful we're going to be mean like isn't it funny I feel like people are usually well at least, and I totally felt this growing up, like you were intimidated by the popular girl. You were intimidated by the pretty one. And it was like, why? I think why? that, and that's something I try to actually teach my daughter too, Absolutely. is like, you are going to be friends with every single person. You might not love all of them, but you can like everyone and they yeah. might not like you or love you back. But like, you have to treat everyone the way that you would want to be treated. And you know how you said earlier, yeah. uh, if they you know, maybe someone doesn't want to play with you one day or whatever. That's what I have to tell in five-year-old talk, you know, like, no, it's important. <laughs> you never can start too young of teaching them yeah. these skills. You really can't, yeah. but if we teach our kids to see who they are, what their gifts and strengths are, and know that it's okay to have things that you have to work harder at. That doesn't mean, I mean, as a woman that I'm thinking of all the things, motherhood, like homemaking, I should say does not come naturally to me like okay, cooking yeah. and cleaning and all these things and that's what's deemed as a good wife and mother in right. society and it puts me in this box where I'm like I don't do well in this box but guess what I still have gifts and strengths that add a lot to being a mom I have gifts yeah. and skill sets like I might not be the best cook or cleaner but I have so many other gifts and strengths and I think as soon as it's a society we identify what our gifts and strengths are and who we are. We start to see other people's, others gifts and strengths, like I said before, mm -hmm. and it will bring us closer together. It all starts within like asking yourself at times, I'll say something negative And I'm like, why am I saying that? What's wrong? Well, how I need to look within yeah. and ask myself, why, what am I insecure about right now? And then I vocalize that I'm feeling insecure and I'm like, wow, I'm feeling really insecure right now. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then the second I identify that being insecure isn't bad, it's just saying, this is a growth moment and I'm feeling insecure. 
And my friend goes, I love when you just all of a sudden pop out. I'm feeling really insecure. Right <laughs> it's really refreshing because yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always say, it's funny. I said this to someone and they were like, oh my God, where'd you hear that? I'm like, no, I just came up with it. But I, but I've learned that your insecurities can either push you forward or hold you back. 100%. And I have most recently let my insecurities push me forward. And that's why I'm doing this show. That's why, you know, I'm putting so much out there on social because there's a lot of things that I'm insecure about. And I'm just like, you know what, if I had someone a couple years older than me, a couple months ahead of me, whatever it was, you know, that I could look at and be like, oh, wait, that's normal. Oh, I, it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to look that way. It's okay to have that mindset or that creative idea. Then I would have been able to avoid so much anxiety and so much insecurity, right? So that's why I say, I just want to be the the role model or the resource that I wish I had. Oh, hundred percent. A couple of years back. And you know, I even, cause my mom was a great role model, but for what I want to do, she was in sales and business and everything. And so like different brains, you know? Um, but I just, I know that there's so many more creative people out there and girls that are just looking for positive role models. And I want to be that you are a hundred percent being that for your girls and, you know, other moms and followers that you have. So I'm when I feel the same way about you too. And when you were talking about insecurities, I said, I thought in myself to myself, it's what I teach my kids with, um, the girls I speak to and my children comfort zones, yeah. like those, those things that push us that we're being called to, but we're scared to, to go towards cause it's vulnerability it's facing those. I'm always like, identify what's inside your comfort zone. Comfort zones aren't bad. There's just not a lot of growth there. And then when we step outside, we do the daring thing. We start the podcast, we start the business, and then we step back in refuel and go, okay, I'm alive. (laughs) I did. Wow. I did that. I'm so much stronger than I thought. And I'm glad I did it. Let's do it again. So then you go outside your comfort zone, go back to the ice cream you like to eat or the show you like to watch or the book or the people or no people refuel and then step back out inside your outside your comfort zone into those insecurities and that negative like what's the word I'm looking for those moments where you don't feel like um I'm not the one like Like that negative narrative yeah yeah that we build ourselves yeah and then all of a sudden you keep going back and forth Mm -hmm. and you're like this revolving door of confidence I so, like, oh, I like a revolving door of confidence. I've never said that before, but I'm going to write that down. Yes. All right. I, it, it's now recorded. So you have it. Don't there worry. we go. <laughs> yes. The revolving door of confidence. I love that. So listen, there is a question that I've been asking a lot of my guests. And because it's like I said, I just want to, I wish there were things that I knew when I was younger. Uh, what age, if you could go back to being any age, what age would you go back to be? Oh, you know what? I think about my childhood and I think about times that were so hard. I would probably go back to the age of 12 and I would hug her Mm. and I would say, you're going to be okay. This is going to make you into who you're meant to be because at that age was when the bullying started, the insecurities really started to over like flow into my life. And I would go back to that age because I think it would really set a better stage for a junior high, high school presence and then to college to say, let's identify your gifts and strengths because I didn't test well at school. Okay. I thought I was stupid. So I wish I could go back and say what I say to my girls and say, let's identify your gifts and strengths because you are smart. I really didn't start saying that till I was married and with kids. I always thought, oh, I hope the kids get your brain because you're a lot smarter. He's like, no, we... I did well at school, hon, but I wish I had your brain, you know, like we would talk like that. And I wish I could just go back and say, let's do what I just did with my daughter. Who are you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. I'm going to, I mean, even though Kennedy's little, I'm going to try and get her to, she'll be pretty creative with an I am statement. I'm pretty sure. And it will shift through her ages, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, that's be fun. So cute. If you do, will you please send that to me? Because that, that is yeah, so yeah. cute. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, listen, I've taken up enough of your time. I feel like we could chat so much more, but will you come back? Can we do like another one of these? I would love, love, love that. All right. And I want to hang out with you. I'm going to come to California. Um, You can just meet me in Hawaii. Okay. (laughs) We'll figure that out. Yeah, Come to California, whatever. We'll figure it out for sure. Um, But tell us something fun that's kind of coming down the pipeline and where everyone can find you. 
Okay. Something fun coming down the pipeline. I feel like there's a lot coming through the pipeline right now. I'm going to start a podcast Yay! and I'm in the middle of a book and those are coming down the pipeline right now. And you can find me on Instagram at McKenna Rose Brown or on my wonderwomanjournal.com. Amazing. I am going to go load up my cart with a, a Wonder Woman journal for sure, because I think I need one. And like I said, uh, be, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. Wonder yeah. Girl Academy, what ages? So I would say as long as they can read and write, I've had parents purchase them for daughters who can't read and write and they write for them. And a lot of moms buy the Wonder Girl Academy with the Wonder Woman prompted journal because they're the same, just worded okay. differently for children and adults. Perfect. And it's been a great bridge of communication. So women will say, what's your heart today? And the kids, be, it's more of like a, an indirect question, but direct to kind of get to know each other. So I've gotten feedback from moms that it's actually been such a great bridge of communication for kids. So that's, yeah. Add to cart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for chatting with me. We'll chat soon. Okay. Okay. Thank you All so right. much. Bye. Okay, bye.